Hello, my name is Ryan Verbecki, and I am the Manager of Principal Architects at Bertana. Today we are going to go over a short video on buffer credit starvation analysis. The purpose of this video is to show you how to use virtual WISM's reports and analytics to identify buffer starvation within your environment. It will also show you how to complete a root cause analysis of where the workload driving the buffer starvation is originating from. Integrations used in this video are fiber channel hardware integration, our switch integration, our VMware integration, which is referenced in analytics, as well as our Cisco STS SAN telemetry streaming integration, which is also referenced in our analytics. The services report used is DI Performance Buffer Credit, and our analytics used are Advent Advisor and Trend Matcher. Why should you investigate buffer starvation events? Buffer starvation events can lead to poor performance for servers and applications or many applications, depending on the impact it's having on your infrastructure. If buffer starvation is severe enough, it can lead to fabric link events, dropped frames, and impacting IO aborts. Potential significant impact can also occur with utilization and overall server or application throughput. The throughput impact can lead to long running scheduled jobs for critical servers or applications. We will now go into virtual wisdom and do a demonstration of how to investigate a buffer starvation event. Once logged into the virtual wisdom interface, you will want to click on the reporting section on the left hand side of the screen. This will take me into the reporting section. The particular report we're going to reference today again is the fiber channel performance buffer credits. To get to this report quickly, I was able to search by performance and underneath the problem resolution section, you're going to see that particular report. If I click on this report, this report allows me to look at two things. Workload across the different components of my infrastructure, HBA, storage, ISLs. It also allows me to understand the impact of buffer credit starvation across the environment and related to HBAs, hosts, storage, ISLs, and so on. The top of the report is going to cover the HBA port information for buffer credits. The middle section of the report will start to cover the ISL link utilization versus buffer credits. And then when I get a little further down in the report, you're going to get to the storage port utilization versus buffer credits. In this particular section, we're going to break down the storage port utilization and buffer credits based on software-based metrics for Brocade or Cisco, depending on which one it is that you're running. And then we also break it down based on our hardware buffer credit metrics, which is based on our hardware probes, which we'll look at storage port percent time at zero transmit credits, as well as receive credits. In this particular instance, the transmit credit for a storage port is going to be the storage port transmitting to the switch, which would be a read request because you'd be sending data from the array back to the device requesting it. A receive credit is going to be from the switch to the storage port, which would be a write request from the device trying to send the data down to the particular storage ports. Within our report, we can instantly see, looking at this particular time frame for the last six hours, we have a particular trend where we see three buffer credit starvation events impacting some storage ports within our infrastructure. If I highlight the particular trend, you're going to see that it's four pure storage ports that are impacted. If I look to the right, we're going to see that the read payload rate at the time of the event on those four pure storage ports hits near capacity of almost 778 megabytes per second, and these are 8 gig storage ports. If I scroll up to the top of the screen, you can get back to the HBA buffer credit and utilization section, and instantly you'll see there's a trend that matches the workload of the flow control one that we looked at below. And we can see that a particular host that gets busy right at that time frame, the ESX05, causes a significant workload across both HBAs to the storage ports themselves, right here at the read utilization. And when that read utilization impact hits those four storage ports, we see the buffer credit starvation start to increase. So instantly within this report, I was able to identify a flow control event on four pure storage ports. I was able to identify the workload driven to those storage ports. And then I was able to quickly identify the particular host or HBA ports that are driving those workloads. What we can also do to help identify these particular flow control events and what's driving those workloads 
is reference our analytics and use our event advisor and trend matcher analytics, which I will show you next. To get to the Event Advisor and Trend Manager Analytics, you will want to click on the Analytics portion on the left-hand side of the screen. Once in the Analytics section, the first thing we'd want to do, if we want to use Event Advisor to go out and look for flow control or buffer starvation events in the environment, we can do that directly without having to go through reports. So what you can do is hit Run New. When you come into here, we know we were looking at storage ports, so I'm going to go down to Storage Ports. And the metric that we were looking at in the report that we were going through was percent time at zero transmit, because we knew that we had a read workload that was causing a flow control event on our storage transmit port. If I select that and I say, okay, and I look at the last week's time frame and I hit run, it's gonna go out and look for particular time frames on when we've seen flow control events across the environment. And for the sake of speeding up this, video, I'm going to go ahead and go over to the analytics section and show you the saved one that I had run, which is underneath Advent Advisor output. And underneath here, you can see here's the one that just finished. I have one that's called buffer credit starvation video. This one will allow me to kind of show you what it detects. So I said, look at storage ports for some time at zero transmit. When I hit run, it went out and it looked for any particular storage ports that were above a certain buffer credit starvation and it found these particular four ports that had flow control events. And you can see it's the exact same four that we saw when we were looking at the report. If I click on this particular event, it will take me into that particular event and it'll populate what it sees for those trends. And you can see that it saw event number one was on Thursday, March 26th. At 8 a.m., we were having normal flow control and then we jumped up to a little over 20%. On Thursday, March 26th, we had an event at this particular time frame and so on. From here, you can jump into our trend matcher analytic by clicking trend match, and it'll take this particular trend, it'll populate this particular trend into our report here, as you see. It's gonna say that it's looking at this storage port, here, CT1, FC1, looking at that percent time at zero transmit. You can look at quick mode, which is gonna be a faster search looking at large scale features. It looks at less data granularity and tries to find a faster match and result. Or you can do our robust mode, which is a more comprehensive search, which can be a lot slower, but it takes more uh, granular metrics into consideration and does a more exhaustive search to try to find something to match this pattern. And then you have the options down below to tell what you want it to look for. You can say search all connected entities or conversations. You can say look at buffer credit starvation. We know we're looking at buffer credit, so that's the one that I would want to run. But you can also run search all connected entities without conversations, which is a faster search because you're not getting all the way down to the conversation layer. You can do a targeted situation where you tell it what to look for specifically, or you can use our old legacy search, which is not limited to any particular situation. It's just going to go out and kind of search everything and look for something that pattern matches. And when I hit run, it's going to go out and take this buffer credit starvation uh, situation or scenario run it against this particular storage port that's having flow control events and it's going to try to identify who's causing it. For purposes of this video, I've kind of already run this trend matcher analytic, so I'm going to jump over to the output from it to kind of show you. So underneath trend matcher, I have the output saved. This particular output we have underneath here, if I go ahead and jump into it, you're going to see I have one that's related to buffer credit starvation example. If I go into this, it's going to populate with the results of when we would have hit run on that particular configuration of that uh, analytic for trend matcher that I had previously showed you. So underneath here, let me scroll up to the top. It's going to show these were the flow control events that we were seeing across this particular time frame. I ran against this particular storage port, which is the one that I showed you previously. I did robust mode to go out and look across the time frame. This particular time frame, I said, just go ahead and look at the last few hours and let me see what I actually see going on. And when it came back, it actually found a pattern match to what we had. So what it shows you here is an 87.32% correlation. It says, I found a read payload rate from our hardware probe metrics that matches that pattern on ESX05. So you can see the blue is the ESX host, the green is the flow control in the storage port. When the workload on ESX05 increases, the flow control increases on my storage port. That's using a hardware-based metric. It also 
was able to identify using Cisco SAN telemetry streaming, which is another hardware integration that works through the Cisco switches, it found read payload rate and matched that metric. So now I'm looking across two different integrations and I'm finding identical matches because I have not only uh, our hardware in place, but I have the Cisco SAN telemetry streaming in place. If I go down a little bit further, it's going to show you read utilization, which is looking at switch data. This one's going to be a little less of a ma match because I'm looking at one minute data on flow control. Sorry, I'm looking at less than one minute data on flow control. And the read utilization is a five minute metric. So uh, you can see that the percentage of correlation on this one is only 58 because I have less data points to match with more data points. But yet you can still see that that workload that increases on that host even from software matches the flow control event. So just using this alone, I was able to identify using our hardware probes, our SAN telemetry streaming, as well as our switch integration to see what was going on with the infrastructure and what was impacted, which is that ESX05 server. But I also have the VMware metrics to see that at that same time frame, here's this ETL DB02. So I knew it was an ESX host, and now I know which basically database server or database VM server is driving the workload to that ESX05. So I've done cross correlation across four different integrations and four different metric sets to come up with exactly which VM was driving that workload. I can also see the impact to CPU ready. If the CPU goes up during that time frame, and you can see there is a subtle increase to CPU ready. On the left hand side is going to be your topology and you're going to see again this is a 16 gig host and it's connecting to 8 gig storage ports through this particular fabric because we were looking at one particular storage port above that we were trend matching against. This concludes our example of going through the analytics. In summary, we were able to identify storage port buffer credit starvation events. We reviewed the services performance buffer credit report to help identify which storage ports were impacted and which host was driving the workload. Alternatively, we ran the Advent Advisor analytic as a way to identify buffer credit events in the infrastructure. We also demonstrated the trend matcher analytic pattern matching and how to identify the source of the buffer credit impact. Example of typical next steps would be as follows. Review the workload on the identified ESX host or VM that is causing the flow control. Validate there are no speed mismatches driving the buffer credit event. As you will remember, we identified a 16 gig host talking to 8 gig storage ports in this video. If necessary, potentially throttle workload to alleviate storage port flow control, as well as you can alternatively perform a Q depth analysis to determine if high Q depths are driving buffer credit impact. This concludes the video on buffer starvation analysis. Thank you.